the next segment that we have next is the hot topic segment. If you're uh, you know, a steady viewer, you know what that is. If you are not, this is just when we generalize the conversation and really break it down and just basically have a good time with the chat and obviously educate people on this topic. So the topic that we have for our hot topic is the generational gap and division as an issue in Nigeria. How can we get the older generation to understand the youth's plight? Obviously, this is coming right at the back of the fact that SARS movement has made a clear division between both generations. It seems that the younger people have not been able to communicate properly to the older generation as to why we want what we want. If anything, there is um, a disparity between them. We've seen videos of older generations raising plaques to say we don't want we want SARS, we want SARS. So clearly there's a, a division with that. But more so than SARS, there is that underlying fundamental differences. So I brought Adenike <coughs> Lalei, who is a radio broadcaster with Kenny's 104.1 FM with over 15 years of broadcast experience under her belt. Adenike is a seasoned broadcaster who has interned and worked with several radio stations, including OGB, Siabeokuta, Kule FM, Lagos, to name a few. She believes that newscasting and political programs are a major calling, and she's been part of the SARS movement, especially in the digital space. She has used the hashtag and supported the movement in many ways that, like I've mentioned severally, we appreciate, especially coming from a grassroots youth like you and I. So please welcome with me, Adenike. Hi. Hi, yeah. Hi there. <laughs> Hello, Omar. Do Hi, you know? how's it going? Apologies for the background noise. Oh, it's, Sorry. it's okay. Let's just really jump into the conversation quickly because we're running out of time. Okay. I wanted to find out your thoughts on why you think the Nigerian youth have not been able to communicate to the older generation um, what, what our needs are, why, why we can't get them to support us. Do you think this is a deliberate attempt for the older generation to frustrate the youth or is there something else that we're not seeing? I don't think it's a matter of us not to, you know, not saying the right things. It's about them not listening to us. You get my point? Mm. They are not listening to us. You know, we say the right things. We, we talk about this every time. We complain every time. The truth of the matter is the older generation or generations, they enjoy an amazing Nigeria. Mm. You need to listen to them talk about their days back in UI, OAU, UNN and everything. Mm. They had it really good. They enjoyed schooling in Nigeria. They enjoyed good roads. They enjoyed the basics, really. But what do we have to talk about? For example, I grew up in a Nigeria, you know, that has erratic power supply. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a mother and my child also. Now she knows where there is no power. Once there is no power, she goes to the curtains, she folds the curtains and she tells me to go put on the generator. I think that's an indictment on me as a parent, you know. So it's just, it's not like we're not saying the right things. It's just that they're not listening to us. And sometimes I feel like they feel we're just like we're asking for the moon. And I don't mm. think so. We just want, we want the basics, same way you enjoyed Nigeria. And the truth is they actually enjoyed in Nigeria under military administrations. We have democracy. We've had democracy since 1999. What do we have to show for it? It's embarrassing. So mm. it's not like we're not saying the right things. We are. They are not just listening. listening. And everything they complain about, like, for example, they say, oh, we are always on the phone. We went, we have dreads. We have afros or whatever it is. We dress a particular mm. way. Go mm -hmm. and look at their pictures. You know, back in the day, they mm -hmm. used to dress the same way. So <laughs> we're, we're really not Personally. connecting well. And I don't know where that is. But I just feel like they're not just listening, really. Mm. That's Hi, what Adenike. I think. They're not listening. Hello, Adenike. Yeah, hi. Hi, this is Ife again. Um, okay, Ife as well, as like I should say. Um, I think for the first time in a lot of years, they're beginning to pay attention to us. The older generation on our side, especially the youth right now with the NSARS movement. Now, I know we're trying to take this away with, from the NSARS movement, but I see a lot of people, I see a lot of older people. I had a conversation with my dad yesterday. My dad is 63 years old. And I called him and I asked him a question that, what do you think about the whole NSARS movement? He said, for the first time, I am proud of Nigerian youth. They are out there, they are making their voice heard. Now, do you think that this is a step in the right direction? And if we continue like this, do you think that we've been probably kick out this cabals from um, political seats? Mm. Okay, before before she comes yeah, I in, think... 
Okay. Before you come in, I just quickly want to add because it's supposed to be like a conversation, yeah? yeah. And I mean, thank you for where you, you came from, having to compare mm. your time and you now as mm. a parent and your parents' time. Um, but for me, when it comes to generational gap and what I see happening now, I, I most times I don't think it's just about um, they not wanting to support us. I also think it's about um, our generation, no? Our generation and the kind of privileges that come with our mm. generation as well, which means we are digitalized and we understand, based on the fact that digital is something that evolves, we understand the importance of evolving and learning as well and also getting um, in tune with whatever it is that we walk into. So um, is it Albert Einstein that, that said, when you stop learning, you actually start dying? Yeah, and I think they've gotten to a point where they have most of them have decided to say you know what um, i have lived my life mm. i i don't care about what is going to happen or what is happening this is just a life i've lived and i'm mm. i'm fine i mean there was someone on one of the television stations in nigeria talking uh, um, yesterday and he was saying something about how it's impossible for a someone in his 20s or her 20s to be able to make 7 million naira or drive mm. a car of 7 million and i'm saying Uncle, how do you understand what the digital age can do? Do you understand that you can become a millionaire legitimately online if, if, without having to do anything illegal? And there are jobs like that. There are professions like that. You just have to be able to learn the skill. So because they do not even understand the opportunities that we have as a people, they can easily sink into thinking that any young person you see that is very flashy and is living the the dream, the person is into Yahoo or 419, right. like they like to call it. All right, you know. so just to buttress Elsie's point as well, like she said, um, like our generation mm -hmm. focuses on digital, right? Since we're running out of time, so we'd just like you to answer all those questions at once. So, um, I, do you think that we have been using the having... wrong communication yes, tool? Can. Do you think we have been using the wrong communication tool to speak to the older generation? Because like she said, a lot of them are not on social media. A lot of them still read the newspapers, still go by 10 o'clock to watch the news, 9 p.m. to watch the news before they get dissemination of information. But we see these things on our fingertips. Do you think we're using the wrong tool of communication to, to communicate with the um, older generation I don't as well? I remember all these questions, but if you can quickly touch upon everything that the anchors have said. Okay, okay. I think uh, around the time you, you, you asked earlier that that, you know, is this the right step in the right direction? Mm. Hello? Yeah, we're right here. We're right here. Yes, uh, that, you know, some of them are quite um, supportive. As much as we've seen supportive parents, we've also seen people that are really not, you know, that are not being supportive. But let's focus on the ones that are very supportive of the movement, that understand what is going on. I think they have come to the realization that, you know, something has to be done something has to be done and they really can't do much for example you, you know when i remember the 20 was it 2015 elections you know uh how they you know talked about this uh, president and all that to us because a lot of them experienced him whether good or bad they experienced it you understand so it was easy for them to talk to us about him again whether good or bad but yeah. because a lot of us you know probably were born the year he became with yeah. the head of state or maybe two years before or maybe a few years after really right. so we didn't really know him that much you understand right. but now they see what is on ground that the problems we're, we're complaining about time. today they yeah. complain about it maybe decades ago and all that so something has to shift something's got to give yeah. so they know they don't have a choice also, talking about the SARS movement, you know, the, the victims of these rogue officers are their children, are their grandchildren. So they don't have a choice anymore. So again, I'd like to, you know, say a big thank you to the parents who have yeah, been extra supportive. Absolutely. You know, the grandparents who have been so supportive. And thank would, you so much. And to and those that are not supportive, at least not, you know, uh, that are not supportive yet, I hope they come around eventually. Thank you so much, Adenike. I'm really, really sorry that... You know, time just flies when we're having fun, and I wanted to dig in more on your mindset, especially knowing that you're sat in another generation. But thank you for your time. I really enjoyed. We, we did enjoy chatting thank with you. you. Thank you too. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Yeah. Um, and that is all that we can right. take for today's episode, unfortunately. But please make sure that you join our conversations on social media with the hashtag Tea Time. Or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember that you can catch up on all these episodes and our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa.